Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna help you pick the perfect putter and explain why playing the wrong putter can significantly hurt your game. I highly recommend when getting a new putter, you get the Quintic putter fitting, but if you can't get one in your area or you can't afford one, no worries. I'm gonna go over how my fitting went, talk about my findings, and so that way you can apply that when looking for a new putter yourself. So as you can see, I have two putters with me. One's a mallet and one's a blade. So this is the White Hot Pro from Odyssey, and this is a Phantom 5.5 from Scotty Cameron. So I'm gonna be talking about the differences between a blade and a mallet putter. Also, one of these putters is 650 and another is 200. So in this video, I'm also gonna be talking about my experiences with both of them and if it's worth splurging on a more expensive putter or if getting a cheaper putter is just fine. So first thing to consider when buying a new putter is I think you should get a putter fitting. And I think not all putter fittings are created equally. So when I was first looking for my Scotty Cameron, I went to Golf Town since it's such a big store in Canada. I thought they'd have a lot of different options and I had a putter fitting then. But I just wasn't really happy with how it got carried out. And for such a big purchase, I really wanted to be sure I got the right putter for me. So while the Golf Town fitting was nice as it measured loft and lie angles of the putter. You're obviously looking at these for when you're looking at irons and stuff like that, but I feel like the putter is often neglected. So definitely dialing in the loft and lie angle correctly is important. But one thing I didn't like about the Golf Town fitting was it just wasn't really in a controlled environment. So while it was nice having someone look at my putting stroke and analyzing that, I just feel like the human eye can only get you so far. And when you're putting towards a hole, we're not lined up correctly the same every single time. So there could be slight nuances of how my aim could be shifted, might not be aimed correctly at the hole. And if I'm missing a putt right, for instance, it might not be I'm pushing the putt. It might just be that I started the putt off more to the right. You know, a human eye might not be able to detect that. So that's why I think just having a more controlled setting at the Quintic, I know that everything is captured with high speed motion cameras that I feel more confident that my data is being captured correctly. One caveat is you need a good putter fitter to go along with the putter fitting. So why can the wrong putter actually affect your putting game and make it a lot worse? It might not actually even be your putting per se, it could be you're just playing with the wrong putter. So first off, the most common thing to look at is the length of the putter. And if you're playing the wrong length, this can affect one, your eye line of how you're looking over the ball. It's highly recommended that you want to be looking directly at the ball or slightly inside. This would give you the best chance to aim up the putt correctly. If you're playing with a shorter putter to get that perfect eyesight, you're gonna to have to be closer to the ball. You're gonna be more hunched over. It's gonna affect your posture. This could affect your swing. And so overall, just not a good recipe for a perfect putting stroke. If you have a longer putter, you're going to be standing more farther away. So that way you get that eye line over the ball. And similar to the shorter putter, this can just affect your stroke as well too. And in my case, I came into the putter fitting playing a putter too short for me. And so what that resulted in was me, one, being hunched over, but if I were to stand farther back, I'd have to grip the putter up and there was not enough grip for my hands to go on. So this caused a situation where at impact, my wrist would sometimes flip and I'd actually be de-lofting my putter on impact. So that is one thing actually that could be harmful if you're playing a shorter putter. You could be affecting how you're coming through the ball. So after the putter fitting, I was equipped with a longer putter, a 36 inch. This just helped my posture. I feel more comfortable putting now. And especially when I'm practicing, my neck and my back don't hurt from being hunched over all the time. So another thing to look at is the loft and the lie angle. So the loft can affect the roll. So if you have too much loft, you could be launching the ball in the air and creating some backspin. If you have too little loft, you could be driving the ball into ground and then that's another problem in itself. Having the correct lie angle just helps you be in a good position to get more center strokes on that putter. Having the incorrect lie angle can affect if it comes off the heel or the toe more and this can cause directional issues with your putter. All right, so we talked about some factors influencing the putter. Now to talk about the face shape. So we have the mallet and the blade. So the mallet will be the more forgiving putter. It has a higher MOI. It's a heavier putter. It'll help with a smoother stroke. It'll be more forgiving on off center hits, less face twist. The blade, while it's less forgiving, that also helps with the feel. So being more precise and can help with distance control. 
but just have to be careful on off center hits as this face can twist. Another thing that's different is the amount of toe hang in these putters. So blade putters have more toe hang and mallets usually have little to none. So having more toe hang is for a putter that has more of an arc in the swing. And then on the flip side, just having less toe hang, more for straight back, straight through swing, or just less of an arc. I think ultimately this comes down to a personal preference on the mallet or the blade face shape. Uh, for me personally, I wanted more forgiveness just because I don't want to lose speed on off-centered hits, so I opted for the mallet. And for me, I like the look of the mallet. It just gives me more confidence down at the ball. I think it's because I have a smoother swing with this and I just feel like I'm gonna be hitting the putt right with this. Scotty Cameron, cheaper putter, one costs more, but is it worth more? Do I think it's worth it? I think all in all, the most important thing is to get a putter fit right to you, getting the right specifications to fit your stroke and your game. And then we can go on to talking about the brand. I think you're gonna get way more beneficial results doing that because if this putter was fit to me precisely, I think that this putter could just putt just as well. But that doesn't mean that I don't think that getting a Scotty Cameron is a waste of money per se, because I like the look of this putter. I think for mallet options, I think this is one of the nicest looking putters on the market. And because I like the look of it, I'm encouraged to putt a lot more, practice more, and thereby my putting has improved tremendously. I also love just the feel of how the ball rolls off the face when I make contact. It's just something I think you might have to try to experience it. I also like the different custom options that Scotty Cameron brings as far as different colors and different stamps that you can put on different putters. So really just giving it a nice personal touch to your putter, especially when a putter is going to be with you for most of your golf game. You want to have something that's fit for you and you like the look of it. I know this is just another topic, but Scotty Camerons are great collectibles. They have some limited edition releases. They also have head covers that are pretty cool. Me just being the kind of person who likes to collect things, I think I put some value on Scotty Cameron, but obviously this is just a stock model that you get off the shelf. But as far as the brand Scotty Cameron itself, I like the idea of being able to collect things. So to sum it all up, do I think the Scotty Cameron is worth the money? To me, yes, I, I'm in love with this putter. But to someone who just wants something that can get the ball to the hole, will you get better results with a Scotty Cameron versus a cheaper putter? I think you'll get the same results, you just have to get fit correctly. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video, hopefully you found it informative, hopefully I answered some questions that you might have had when choosing the right putter. But if I forgot to address something, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer that. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, peace. I'm a rock star. Yeah. I'm a rock